Hello, everyone. I'm Neil Jensen, Vice President and Head of Global Product Vision and Experience at Workday. Today, we're going to explore the impact of generative AI on enterprise operations and to chat about a few key best practices with my special guest, Janine Zucker, Global Workday Chief Commercial Officer at Deloitte. Welcome, Janine. Um, you know, let's get started here and, and let's dig in. Can you tell us a little about, bit about yourself and your role at Deloitte? Sure. So um, that was a fancy way of saying I'm the global workday leader. Um, I'm very blessed. I wake up pinching myself that I get to be out in the, the marketplace, work with our customers, work with our prospects and work with, you know, what I look at as the, the best team uh, in the ecosystem and being able to implement and being your partner for, for years. That's fantastic. Yeah. What a great job. Yeah. Um, Let's, let's get into some questions about Gen AI. I know all of our viewers want to want to hear what we have to say about yeah. it. Um, how do you see generative AI fundamentally transforming enterprise ops? So look, I, I look at generative AI as revolutionary, um, not evolutionary. I mean, I really see this as big as moving to the cloud. Yep. And you know, what we're seeing, it's much more about creating content around generating insight and knowledge, not just about automating tasks. Automating tasks is great, right? But really leveraging that data in such a significant way. But I want to be clear about one thing. It's, we're seeing this as supporting the workforce. It's not about replacing the workforce. Yep. And, you know, you look back at some of these, you know, revolutionary types of things that have happened, and really we've seen more jobs created, right? But it's going to be around, you know, how does the workforce work with generative AI solutions to really create better value for the business. I love that point of view. And I think, you know, you look at HR, there's so much manual that's still embedded in all that we do. And I, like you, look at this generative AI movement as a tremendous opportunity in order to, to change a lot of the game. Yeah. Um, what are some of the key areas where do you think it can create most immediate impact? So first of all, it, we're seeing it leveraged on HR and in finance, right? And so when you think about recruitment and job creations, I mean, taking away all of the manual effort to create the job and really focus on bringing in the best talent overall. Understanding skills, right? I, I look at the workforce as one of the best talent like pools for organizations, yet if they don't really understand the skills and how to leverage them, we're missing out, yeah. right? So, you think about a skill, a skill back 10 years ago used to have like a lifespan of like seven to 10 years, right? So you learned a skill, you used it for quite a while. We've seen that be reduced now to like, in some cases, less than a year. Yeah. So if you think about it, really constantly learning new skills, but understanding what those are and really having Gen AI be able to, you know, be able to predict and kind of say, look, these, these are different types of skills you have in your organization that you could continue to leverage and build on and move people around. That's a, I mean, a workforce that is amazing and incredible for organizations to tap into. Having your finger on the pulse of what's emerging yep. can be so empowering, right? Absolutely. Enabling you to direct your strategies yep. into what matters, yep. not what you're looking at in the yep. rearview mirror. Um, with, with the partnership between Workday and Deloitte, um, what unique advantages do you think enterprises gain in leveraging gener generative AI? So we've been very purposeful around investing in Workday's industry uh, accelerator program and have accelerators across numerous industries. And that's been really advantageous because we're able to embed Gen AI into the solutions. We're leveraging Extend to really innovate mm -hmm. and build Gen AI into the solutions that we're working with our clients to solve their problems. And so to make it more specific to that industry and the business issues that our clients are trying to solve, has, is really advantageous for both of us together in the marketplace. I mean, in areas such as healthcare, higher ed, all across financial services, insurance, uh, asset management, banking. I mean, we've really invested heavily in these areas because the problems that our clients are trying to solve are pretty different across those industries. And in healthcare, you know, nurses is very yeah. different workforce than investment managers, right? And so being able to have that data, create those insights, it's pretty powerful. 
I'm glad you guys are doing it. I mean, it was said this morning during the innovation keynote. Yep. Industry is something hard to get to when you're a software company. Yep. And having a great partner like you all, you know, leaning in there, I think yep. is, is fantastic. We are all in there. Yeah, thank you. Um, in your experience, how important is the alignment between technology and business strategy when implementing things like AI solutions? So, great question. Um, I look at it, and, and I used to have conversations with clients to talk about our HR leaders, our finance leaders, our IT leaders. They have to build a better bridge together, right, as they're implementing these solutions. Now, they have to be on the same island. It's no longer about having bridges. They all need to be on the same island together because so much of it is about having trustworthy data, right? And understanding those business issues and what kind of content do you want to create? What kind of insights do you want to create and, and be able to predict and be able to suggest? So it's no longer, it has to be so intertwined. And so I like looking at it as now, everybody has to get over the bridge and join and be on the same island together. I think it's three executives, right. HR, yeah. finance, and IT. Absolutely. And when those guys lock arms and are unified yep. in what they're doing, yeah. I think the sky's the limit on I what their, their totally organization agree. can achieve. Um, let's talk a little bit about scale of AI initiatives. Um, what, what challenges do you think companies are going to run into? What should, they, what should they anticipate and how can they, how can they overcome some of that? Yep. So I'm seeing three main issues uh, in the market, right? That I think when, we talk, when I talk to my clients that they're thinking about. The first one is about adoption. Okay. I mean, clearly the adoption of it and what type of programs you need to put in place to really be able to adopt it into the organization. And it's very linked into building the skill sets, having the agility frameworks, being okay to try something and if it doesn't work, be able to pivot. Uh, and that's not that easy in organizations. They don't, nobody likes trying something and nobody likes the failing. And yeah. the failing part goes away, right? You need to be able to try things and be able to pivot and have it, you know, have that agile framework in place. And then the third one is really about trustworthy data and trustworthy AI. And I was recently, uh, um, Zane did a, uh, Zane Rowe, so your, yeah, your CFO, CFO. Uh, recently did a Wall Street Journal, um, Journal article and really talked about trustworthy AI. And it's very, we, we look at it in a very similar way. You have to be able to trust the data because otherwise you're not going to get the adoption, right? You're not going to be able to like leverage the data and insight if, if nobody's trusting it. And so really thinking about and having plans in place to be able to uh, trust the data and get that in. And so like, what do we see organizations doing? They need to invest in making sure that the data is right, making sure that they have that trustworthy framework in place so that this way they could get the adoption, they could build out the right skill sets that are needed within the workforce. You know, I think back a year from today, and I think Neil said in the opening keynote, the word trust 14 times. There you go. And that, that topic has not gone away. No. It's still ever present today, just yes. like it was a year ago. And I yep. think I love the way that you guys are focused on that. Um, let's look at the future, okay? So if you, if you look ahead, mm -hmm. how would you envision the role of generative AI evolving in the enterprise? And what innovations do you foresee being pivotal in the future of business operations? Yeah. So I'm gonna double down on the industry part again. Okay. I think that's just gonna be an important area where we're gonna see it continue to grow and grow and really have solutions that, um, you know, that our clients really see the value from. Um, I will say we really need to see clients looking at how they're going to measure it um, too, because I think that's going to only help with some of that adoption going forward. But think about it. Um, you look at all the the solutions that we have out there together yeah. and how we're empowering right the the workforce uh, think about all of the financial data and that's really at the fingertips right of our clients right now the types of things that they're going to be able to do uh, truly is just revolutionary yeah fantastic Janine we are unfortunately out of time I want to let you know this has been a fascinating conversation for me